Kyle Vesey writes for the Commercial Appeal. He's on the city beat now covering politics or whatever you want to call this situation that's happening locally. The blue flu, bought tired of that phrase. The red rash has now entered into the parlance of the uh, discussion. And uh, good to see you as always. Thank you for coming to see us. Hello, fellas. After your nice article of yesterday, which was rather revealing uh, as you watched... Um, the press conference, what's today, Thursday on Tuesday, I guess yeah. it was, and uh, Mayor Horton keeps putting himself, I mean, he has no choice but to uh, be uh, present uh, to answer questions, many of the same questions, many of the same answers. We've covered this since Monday. You've watched it really closely, I'm sure, uh, down at City Hall and from various angles. We've heard from 10, 15, 20, 30 police officers Mm -hmm. We've seen inside information emails. Uh, we have seen a number of things that other folks haven't seen, perhaps you have. Everybody knows what an ugly mess this is. It's made national news. Uh, it happened before here in 1978. Uh, it was an ugly thing then. It's ugly now. And it seems to be in some kind of limbo. Um, last night, Channel 5 reported that the blue flu was receding. Mm -hmm. Nobody else seems to think that. What do you think? Well, the numbers that came out yesterday would suggest receding may not be the right word, but maybe plateauing. Okay. And it's about this time every morning where we kind of get another update. Okay. And I haven't seen what that is yet, so I don't know. But, you know, we, the number a couple of days ago was 553. And, and we heard 700 yesterday. Yeah, that number was kind of floating out there. I, 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 no one could really confirm that. We couldn't okay. confirm that. So okay. we're sticking with the 550-ish. Okay. Now, over to the fire department. Yeah. And, um, that was the new part yesterday. That was the new yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, Alvin Benson uh, is a very laid-back gentleman and a, mm -hmm. and a really nice guy who's been here before and uh, speaks in uh, measured, uh, graceful tones, doesn't over-dramatize stuff. He said they had about 65 dudes and that they were, in fact, going door-to-door -to, -door to see if they were home mm -hmm. uh, vomiting into a bucket or something to confirm their illness. <laughs> they weren't on the golf course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, what do we make of that situation? Has that peaked, or with firefighters and their erratic schedules, is it hard to determine and define how bad or good that is? Well, that may be a, uh, a valid point. I, I think, again, that's another number that we'll probably find out later on this morning. Okay. You know, the number that it is, if you compare it to the percentage of what the number of fire employees, I think it's 4 or 5%. You know, the police. Uh, were, there was something like 24 or 25 percent of them. The 500 number represents that. I was told there are 1,200 uniformed officers. So if there are uniformed police officers, yes, and the other part oh, are, okay, yeah. are 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 uh, uh, other task force people, drug detectives, enforcement yeah. detectives, right. desk people. So they're calling those people in, mm -hmm. putting them in uniforms, and sending them out on calls. The front page of today's CA. Uh, Jody Callahan's piece about response times mm -hmm. was a bit uh, 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 discouraging. Um, so, all of this being said, and everybody in the media has analyzed and looked at and covered every tentacle of this mess, what do you think is the end game for this? Does anybody know? We've had people say it'll be in the courts, that's already underway. Myron Lowry says, uh, that the bottom line is that there's no stalemate on either side, really, because we're still talking. There's a lot of things on the table, and several suggestions have been made. Well, I mean, the end game, if you are a protester or, or someone who's called out on the blue flu, the end game is the city should restore all these benefits. Um, a, first off, it probably, there probably will be some sort of court action, so let's put that in a bucket. But B, Here's the hard part about compromise. The deal's been done. It's been voted on. It was voted seven to five on June the 17th. Mm -hmm. So the idea that the mayor, you know, and he seemed very open to compromise Tuesday. It's what I wrote about in that article you mm -hmm. mentioned. Right. Uh, given the opportunity to come out and say, these cuts are the law of the land, he did pretty much the opposite. Mm -hmm. But that said, let's say they all get in a room, the police union, the fire union, the directors, uh, the mayor and they come up with some compromise that says hey we're gonna backtrack on this a little bit well the problem is it's still got to go downstairs to the council and have them vote on it so it's not exactly something that's you know people I think are 
thinking it may be sort of this unilateral thing for the mayor to do. Oh, I'm going to back off. We're going to reach a deal. Well, since the deal has been struck, and just by the rules of the place, the, a tax rate has been passed, a budget has been passed, I mean, they're pretty far down the road. This right. would require some pretty major rewinding. I thought it was interesting yesterday, uh, Myron Lowry was in that meeting that you mentioned at the, at the library yesterday mm -hmm. where they all got around a table. Uh, Myron would have been probably, you know, along with Edmund Ford Jr., although his comments have pretty much taken him off the table on this, he would have been thought to be one of the swing votes of that seven. Right. So it's interesting that he was there. Uh, Kyle Beasy is our guest from the Commercial Appeal. Okay, let's analyze what you just said. It, this was, uh, the city council is the deciding factor. The mayor has input, but their vote is the final word. Yeah, they can, they decide the funding of everything. So, if this were somehow by legal means overturned and reversed, what does that do to anything that that governing body has passed during their tenure? And what does it do for anything going forward? It makes it a moot point. Well, that would be sort of a different track. If they were to reverse, yeah, I mean, we're going down the road talking about what a court may or may not do. Right. But, you know, if they were to, say, change this and say, you know, you didn't have the authority to make this cut because there is an agreement in place right. with, your, with your police force, your fire, uh, I don't know that it affects much of anything else. What it does is it comes back and you know they have to do a lot of untying of shoes and a lot of untying of this and that that would be a pretty messy affair but right. if a court said you have to do it you'd have to do it does there at some point come a time when somebody at the state walks in here and says everybody shut up we're taking over well I mean, that would sort of be the detroit scenario i guess yeah. to some degree you know the state uh the specter of the state has been large here and i don't know if that gets enough play uh the general assembly this past spring, winter, um, passed that law that says the city, any city in the state, although we all know who they were talking about, must fund its pension fully. Yeah, it was, I think it was Dyersburg, actually. <laughs> uh, actually, Dyersburg, I believe, does have an underfunded pension, but I'm not sure that's why they were doing it. Um, that they have to have that fully funded by 2020. <coughs> so this is where these decisions come in. Anyone, and, and the debate we're having in the city right now is, should this have been the remedy? for these major cuts? It's mm -hmm. a fair question. Yeah, it is. Very few people are asking the question of whether there needed to be a remedy at all. There did. I mean, the mayor's been on your show. Right. We've looked at the budget. We've talked to everybody. We've heard around. about it for five years now. Everyone agrees yeah. that the pension fund had been neglected and something major has to happen. Out of a $600 million budget, they had 70 some odd billion dollar of a hole, or 60, I mean, a big yeah. number. Right. So something had to happen. This is the route they took, and this is um, what we're talking about now. And you can see why these firefighters and police officers are upset, because they upheld their end of the deal, and right. they, they put yeah. money into the fund out of every check that they got. Well, and, 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 and the city didn't, and then didn't fund the schools, and then uh, it went on from there. Yeah, well, you, you have the whole $57 million so thing. So when yeah. did this all start? Who's responsible? Who can be blamed Yeah, for let's this? backtrack to 1978, when the city was on fire. Um, I don't know who the mayor was then. Dick Hackett was the mayor until 90-91 when Mr. Harrington took over. Why Chandler so, was mayor during okay. the first. Okay, so who put in place these guidelines? Now, as a an addendum to that question, or uh, this is not the only city that has this kind of problem. These pension things that were established 30, 40 years ago are untenable and unsustainable, and this is not the only place this is happening, right? Oh. By far, not at all. I yeah. mean, there's so there there are places that it's probably worse. Yeah. Um, the Memphis pension was put into place in 1948. Um, before you can envision, and and this has been one of the arguments from the mayor's side. 48. In 1948, you didn't envision people would live as long as they do now, and right. therefore you didn't have to pay them every as many mm -hmm. months, you Things know, as in, you do Inconsiderate now. bastards. Die. And, <laughs> and then in 2000 and. You know, I think if you looked at the pension fund, I mean, I know, you know, we can talk about Harrington and Hackett and White Chandler and all that. Um, the pension fund from, you know, was relatively healthy, I do believe, until the market crashed. In a way, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so you're dealing with the effects of that and also the effects of a few years in which they did not put in the right amount of money by right. far. And they, they're, they're not now. I mean, the, right. the last year's budget was, I think, $20 million they put in the pension fund, and their financial experts 
say they need to put 78 million into it. Now, when you say 08 and Wall Street, a lot of this comes down to what the pension fund was invested in in the first place. Uh, a lot of it in the beginning was uh, very secure stocks, T-bills, things like that, that offered a smaller rate of return, but a we more safer. Uh, the, yeah. a safer rate of return. A secure future. And, and then you had a lot of uh, Wall Street types come in to a lot of different cities and say, hey, give us your money and we'll turn it into this for you. And then that blew up when it went with riskier stocks and all nosedived in 2008. And that's why a lot of people lost a lot of money. But the Wall Street folks got rich. We've read the article by Matt Taibbi about that very thing. And it's a matter of robbing Peter to pay Paul. That comes into it. And the overused cliche of kicking the can down the road. Well, and l let's make sure we, we have one thing straight. The pension fund is what needs the money right now, and the city's budget as a whole is not exactly the prettiest picture going. Right. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is, you know, the health care benefit cuts. It, it's, it's interesting to note, and, and we can sit here and get depressed about this, we have another big fight coming up about changing the actual retirement plan. That has not been changed. Right. That got kicked down to October. Right. The idea to change it to a 401k style plan. So that's got to happen. And then, even more, they increased their pension funding this year to 47 million. That's still another 30 million or so away. And this fight is going to rage on, and they're going to have to find 30 million again next year. Okay, so which brings Yay. us back around here again to um, what is going to happen to this. This story is just not going to leave the front pages of the newspaper or the TV or the radio. And these officers are not going to just forget about mm -hmm. this. Um, the ones who are at work still, I'm guessing, have uh, morale issues uh, and issues with their fellow officers who have been on strike, if you will. Um, but I, I, I'm just trying to determine, this is July 10th. These things go into effect January 1, 2015. Mm -hmm. So what are the chances that there is an untying of shoes and a stepping backward and an undoing of this to reach a compromise that could have been reached initially to raise property taxes a little bit to keep the city employees in a more secure position and keep their attitudes right. Well, I think there's a very real chance of that specifically because the mayor very much appears to be on the side of that. Now, what specific plan that is, I don't know. I mean, we talked, what you mentioned was sort of this uh, shared idea that maybe property taxes go up a little bit, maybe the you know, they still s sustain some of the cuts and everyone kind of uh, takes a bite out of it. You know, I, I don't know, but, but the, the thing about it is people are going to bring ideas to the table. And, and you know, you hear ideas like, well, the city council needs to shape its budget mm -hmm. by 10%. Well, mm -hmm. that's nice. That's all well and good. The city council's budget is one and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. You could eliminate the city council's budget, have them all do it volunteer work, and you still got <laughs> uh, $25 million to go to right. mm -hmm. the kind of hole that they cut in June. So, you know, Shea Flynn, I think, I talked to him the other day, he said he doesn't, it's his committee, and you guys know Shea real well, it's his committee that wants to accept these ideas, but what he's saying is, don't bring $100,000 ideas to a $30 million problem, I'm paraphrasing him. And yeah, that's a he, valid point. He told us that over a month ago. Yeah. And we have let him off the hook on this program and not had him come up here because these people are, they are they are in that position. It is their job to balance the budget and to remove all the emotion from this. Now they're the ones everybody wants to hang right. on a cross downtown, all seven of them, and set them on fire. I'm not sure that it's their fault. Um, they did make the votes. They did pass this thing. And and but it's their job to balance the budget. But they're the ones being chastised for making this move. And I'm not sure that all fingers should point there. Why didn't somebody bring this compromise issue to the table before this got done? The compromise was brought to the table by both the police and fire union when they started the negotiations. We had an email from one of the listeners who wants to know, where does the Chamber of Commerce come into all of this? And always, how does that yeah. affect oh, what, the final decision? Big effect. I mean, the Chamber has been pushing... Uh, the business interests have been pushing the mayor on this plan all along. I wrote a big, long story... Uh, in April, it's funny, I have people tweet at me and say, how come you never write about the Chamber's influence? And I have a ready-made link where I wrote this 900-word story about the Chamber's lobbying efforts. Right. Um, they're out there in the open. They've spent a lot of money, a lot of time on it. 
uh, they are incredibly invested in this sticking, and that's sort of another. What is their? Um, we saw the email that the media got from uh, Phil Trinnery, the yeah. new, and I, I still, I mean, I, I'm trying to see what their um, interest is in this. What is it? What's to be gained by pissing off the city employees and yeah. the cops and firefighters? in a city like this that already has a bad image nationally as far as crime and such. It's their job to attract business and new people to live here and such. Uh, it's a hell of a, it's an odd way to go about it. Yeah, their stance is pretty simple that until the city corrects its finances and they don't have these long-term liabilities on their books, that businesses won't come and relocate and create jobs here. And you know, there, there are a lot of reasons that someone may not come and re relocate and right. create yeah, jobs like here. But not cops and firefighters. Yeah, and, and so, but their idea is that you know a, a company is not going to come build a factory in a city that it thinks has a pretty strong possibility in 20 years and going into default. Which, re idea. which reverts back to the fact that the city council, love them or hate them, their job is to fix the budget. That's what they're trying to do. So, you know, damn them or not, that was their job. Well, and, and I don't have the specific, I mean, this predates my even time in Memphis, but yeah. the, the general idea would be, you know, the big city council votes that are very much worth critiquing are the ones in which they didn't fully fund the pension. Mm -hmm. And now you're in this mess right. as a result of those decisions. Who are the people, um, is it the present bunch that voted to not fund the pension, or is it previous administrations? Uh, it, I, think it, I think it would probably be many of the same people who are on there now. Okay. They, I'd need to look that up. Was it one of those case. things that was voted on uh, down the usual lines of conflict and I color? Don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, uh, you know, it's I, I, 1948, huh? 1948. Good plenty. Care. Yep. <laughs> Good freaking plenty. Well, I we're as, as empty-headed about this as anybody else is. You're 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 on top of it, obviously. And I don't know about that. Well, I don't know <laughs> if, if anybody can be to uh, to a certain point, but so one now more time. What? Yeah, now what? We go to Tuesday's city council meeting. Do these meeting cops come back to work, or do they continue this? Do they get fired? Do they get fined? Do well, they the, get the deported? The change in the sick leave policy is going to be interesting to see if that takes effect because it required a doctor's note after three days. Yeah. Um, that went into effect on Tuesday. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see if this moderates and plateaus. But then the next big, I mean, you just have to wait to see if, if someone comes forward and they come out of a room somewhere with a compromise that the a the mayor is behind, but most importantly that enough city council members are behind that they can kind of press rewind on some of this stuff um, and come up with something everyone wants to do. And and I talk to uh, council sources all day Tuesday. I don't get the sense right now, at least as of Tuesday, which I know we're at Thursday now, but I didn't get the sense there's a whole lot of room for compromise. What the council people are saying is, look. We had a lot of bad options. We picked the one that was the best bad option, and they're not happy with it. But this is just what it is. So I think they're gonna. Mm. I think it'll be an uphill climb in the council chambers to get anything new done. And like and like Zeke just tried to say, their answer is to have a public forum. Are you kidding me? That well, was the weakest move they've made so far. Well, the you know, it, it all goes back to, you know, the mayor's response is. Hey, come bring plans to me and, and look. I mean, <laughs> okay, you're it's, elected. I, mean, I got it's one. It's a for cover you. your ass move. Is all of it is. Exactly, it is. exactly. Okay, so we're still confused. Well, uh, we may check with you uh, weekly until we get this resolved, and I'd like to put it in your hands to fix it. Oh, thank you so much. Sure. For that. <laughs> I, I don't have anything else going. Don't on, you wish so. you were going to FCC <laughs> days next week? You yeah. know what? I, I can deal with Nick Saban, or I can deal with this. I'll deal with this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Kyle Vizi, thank you, sir, very much. Uh, follow him uh, in the newspaper and or online. He probably tweets and blasts and all that stuff too, and uh, you can see his uh, fine writing in the newspaper. Thank you for the time and the observations, and I wish we had had more to offer. Thank you. Guys. We'll talk to you soon. Be okay. back in a moment.